Radio, Kansas City. I'm Serenity, and today we have poet and linguist Angela Rue. Hey, hey, hey. How are y'all doing? How are you? So, how have you been, Angela? It's been a minute. Since... I have been blessed. Um, it's been a really interesting year as far as the arts concern. It has some ups, has some major ups, has some downs, but more ups than downs. So, it's been cool. <laughs> Um, I know you put out there the other day, you're saying that you've been doing poetry in Kansas City for 15 years. Yes. So 15. I'm asking as far as, you know, that makes you an OG in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> poetry game. So tell me, what is your perspective of the changing and how the scene has changed since you started to now? Um, For me, I feel like we have grown in a really interesting way like when we when I first started doing poetry it was at Urban Literation You Lit 101 um, and um, there was definitely a major sense of community as far as like everybody kind of getting to know each other outside of poetry and you know being able to kind of fellowship and do things like that but uh, as far as <laughs> like that kind of we've gone through like ebbs and flows I think that you know people move people get married, people's lives change, and so, you know, your your craft and how you pay attention to is going to change as well. So as we've grown, that's kind of what's happened. People have moved and whatnot. But I think that the exciting part is what's been going on with the young people oh. as far as Louder Than the Bomb. So I can see that second or third wave of that community because they're knowing each other in high school and they're going to just grow right. and it's beautiful to watch. And you judge with Louder Than a Bomb. Yes, you I do. work with them. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time judging. I was actually on the first panel for the first bout ever. So that's cool. But so, Do you mentor any of the students too? Or you just judge and help out? Um, I, I mentor, but not in an, any co official capacity. I don't think you necessarily have to be officially a mentor to mentor. As long as you're there to provide any type of insight that you feel that you can impart any wisdom on a young performer, then I think you should do that. So I think that's a responsibility that we all should have as artists to just give back as much as we possibly can. That's true. So since you've been doing performance poetry for so long, how, how long would you say you physically have been writing poetry just in general? Um, really, I didn't start writing poetry until I was like 18. Um, because I think like a lot of people, I, my introduction into spoken word and poetry was through Deaf Poetry Jam <laughs> back then. But um, before that, in high school, you know, poetry wasn't really something that I thought I could even do because, you know, I thought it had to rhyme, it had to have a certain cadence, and like, you know, you get taught about these old white men <laughs> and like I can't relate to Walt Whitman like that it's beautiful but right. I can't relate to that and so you know when you don't see yourself except for you know Maya Angelou and still I and if that if mm -hmm. that so it's just like you when you don't see yourself in reflected in the art then you're kind of like well that's cool but I don't think I could do that but it wasn't until I saw deaf poetry on TV and realized oh wow they're they're talking like I talk, they look like me, they're right. talking about things that I care about. And I was like, oh, I could actually do this. So then I just started writing and I finally got over my stage fright and got up one night and did open mic and it's been, you know, ever since. Yeah, I know you're saying something about you basically have a personal testimony with doing spoken word as far as like the, the stage fright, the... Oh yeah, like I had a stuttering problem. You know, I had a major stuttering problem speaking in public, and I was very fearful of getting in front of large crowds of people to talk. And so for me, getting up and doing that actually helped me gain the confidence to perform. So I feel a lot more comfortable. Like, I have nerves still, but it's good nerves, as opposed to like, you know. But uh, now, it's it's easy for me to now do it. That's an amazing testimony that way. To yeah. Go from, like you said, being shy <laughs> and having issues with your speech and you going to where you are now as far as like you were a champion slam poet yeah, you won, <laughs> yeah. Uh, jazz I've done I've won jazz poetry jam I think like two or three times right now. then you um, competed last year 
to be on the national team for Pound Slam. Yes. So and you actually were awarded a position on the team. So to go from that to where you are now, that's definitely... Yeah, it's crazy. God is good. Um, you know, I did not think in a million years, if you had asked me at 15, you know, you're going to get up in front of, like, a group of high school students at UMKC to do the Women of Color Leadership Conference. No, I wouldn't like you crazy. But <laughs> now it's like, you know, that was that was an amazing moment because it was just like, wow, I'm getting in front of people that at that age, I would never thought I would be in this position. Um, it was just, look at God. It was amazing. <laughs> right. And as far as slam poetry, like, you took a little break from that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, when I was awarded the, uh, the spot for uh, Pound Slam, um, it wasn't that... I have a love-hate relationship with slam. I think mm -hmm. that... You know, you have to kind of embrace the fact that it's subjective. You're, how can you judge art? You know, how can you judge somebody's testimony? But unfortunately, that's a necessary evil. Right. Um, yeah. For me, it was just a case of, you know, sometimes um, people get caught up in the points. Sometimes oh, people get caught up in the true. politics. I'm more about, can we grow as a community? Can we grow as individuals and still maintain a sense of community? And I just was more wanting to focus on that and focus more on being an artist as opposed to like getting involved in slams. So I took a break. Um, yeah. So, you know, I thank you. Slams can, it's that whole culture as far as like being a slam artist, it can be stressful. It yeah. can be. I mean, I've had my moments, especially getting up and doing slam for the first couple of times, feeling like, oh, they're disrespectful. You know, I really put a lot of, you know, hard work into that and feeling like there was this, fraternity or sorority that I was trying to break into but I wasn't getting <laughs> in it. Playing, yeah, I thought like I was being like initiated. Like it was you know, you just gotta go through across the burning sands. Right. And <laughs> and it was just like, you know, you feel like you have to pay your dues before you're given that score. And I didn't think that was necessary. But you know, that was because I was young and didn't understand it. But now I've kinda gotten to the point where, you know, when I tell the young people when they're slamming, like, don't get caught up in the points. That's the worst thing you could but ever it's do. It's so hard. It's really know, hard, so but it's because you really want to put out good work. You do, you and want I want people to say that it's good work. Absolutely, and that's the fine line that you have to kind of like find that find a way to tightrope. Is just that you know everything will take care of Tight, itself. Tightrope. Tightrope. No, you should, she should, she's a Janelle Monet fan. That's uh, yes, so yes. So when you said, I was like, wait a minute. Yes, I am a big Janelle Monet fan. Shout out to Janelle Monet. But uh, seriously though, like you have to find a way to just say, this is what it is. I'm putting out the best work that I possibly can. I'm putting my heart and soul into it, and the rest of it will take care of itself. That's like true. you know, you can't worry about what five other people that are judging you are going to say. Like if you put your heart into it, then that's all you can do. You know, that's really all you can do. So you have to kind of separate yourself and let it go. And that's good that you're mentoring the kids in Lottery Mob because as far as Kansas City Slam culture, you've been around from when it was, we were doing LPS mm -hmm. to now we have um, teams that are actually PSI certified, sending teams to the National Poetry Slam competition yeah, show. You've been around slam culture for a while. Yeah, it's been weird to watch it in its infancy here where it was just something that, you know, that's something that, you know, Chicago does or you know, yeah. LA or New York or Philly. They they do that. We don't really do that. We're just we're just a city in flyover country. And I think that to watch it go from that mentality to the yeah, we're Kansas City and we're gonna send a national team and we did is just a beautiful thing because it says a lot about the city and how we see ourselves. Right. For the longest time we thought, oh, you know, we'll never be New York, we'll never be, you know, Philly or anything like that. You're right, we're not going to be. We're going to be Kansas City. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so we're going to have a different style. Than the yeah, city. we're going to have a different style and we're going to represent a different flavor. So it's just, a, it's just a beautiful thing to watch us kind of take the pride in ourselves and just say, this is who we are, we're from here. And, you know, it's been beautiful to watch. Yeah, right. Like I said, different things popping out, LPS. Pound Slam, Slam You Lit, mm -hmm. um, just to see just from, you know, my background of, because I've kind of been a fan of the scene, <laughs> but you know, yeah, you, you, know, my, you know my closet poet, right, I know. Closet poet yeah, for yeah, yeah, years yeah. until I started actually performing, so I've seen kind of the transition, but to, for you to be actually on the background of 
like you said, you've been doing this for a while in Kansas City, so to see the growth, that's great. Um, as far as issues that you write about, you're getting ready to come out, or actually the pre-sales are already out for your first book. Yes, <laughs> yes. So um, the story on that, um, weirdly enough, um, 2014, like, so New Year's Eve 2013, is that the, because 2013 you were the pitch, yeah, spoken was, word. Was Let's talk about that even. Oh, goodness. Okay. So that was a weird story because actually um, Pitch Weekly, shout out to Pitch Weekly, they didn't contact me. I had to find out through Facebook. I kept getting a bunch of, congratulations, congratulations. I was like, well, we'll, 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 we'll vote. <laughs> so, you know, I uh, someone sends me a link because, you know, Pitch Magazine has a best of KC that they do every year. They award like best restaurant, best place to, you know, go get a drink, best, ha you know, best hamburger joint, things like that. It's lifestyle stuff. So uh, they never ever had a best spoken word artist category until 2013. And it was so weird because I didn't even know I was even nominated. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden they named me best spoken word artist. And I got the link from somebody and I'm at work. <laughs> you know, no one knows I'm a poet at work. So I'm literally just like, <laughs> so, you know, I had to go and take a praise break in the bathroom. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was great. It was just like, you know, I went and read the article and I was just like, it was a humbling experience because I was like, wow, that, that's me <laughs> they're talking about. But, um, but when, when that happened, like that New Year's Eve, I literally sat down and I wrote down all the goals that I wanted to accomplish for the next year and I prayed about it and I just did not talk about it at all and it was one of the things I wrote down was I wanted to write a book oh. then everything came to fruition that I wanted to do I wanted to do the women of color conference and I ended up doing that with uh, with the keynote speaker being Beverly Bond from Black Girls Rock that was crazy um, I ended up doing a feature at the Blue Room and I ended up doing all oh, these, yeah, the yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, I was doing, uh, I, everything I set out to do, I ended up doing, except for the situation with the book, and then, like, February, March, I got contacted by Jason Reberg at Prospero's Books, um, and they contacted me about their series called Pop Poetry, it's a series that they've been, that they started doing, uh, this year where they put out 12 poets, 12 books, 12 months. And so he asked me, do you want us to publish you? And I said, you know, I'm thinking like a chapbook, but for those who are not familiar, chapbooks are just self-published books. You just, you know, you go and you write, you know, you put your poetry in print, you yeah, can sell it. Like you know, about 15 poems yeah, 15 or so. Yeah, 15 poems or so. Yeah, so so I was thinking, book. I was like, okay, is this going to be a short book? Like, no, this is like going to be a full-fledged poetry book, Library Congress ID. I said, we'll sell it in the store. I said, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm definitely with that. So um, I ended up doing that. And um, so November 21st, the Sinbad sessions will be... Birth to the world. <laughs> and Sinbad, that's the, the, yeah. that's the hookah lounge, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. For those people who do not know, um, yes, my vice is, I'm getting over it. I'm actually trying to quit now. It's just so weird. Um, I do smoke hookah. Um, right. I mean, yeah, that's my that. Everyone has that thing. That's my right. that. That's my that thing. Um, but what ended up happening was actually, um, Going up to Sinbad's on um, on Broadway and 39th, it gave me an opportunity. Like I would bring my laptop with me, mm -hmm. and I'd have my headphones on. I would be I would write there. Is what what it was. So that's why I wrote and called it the Sinbad Sessions because I literally wrote my book, most of it at the Sinbad. As, as Sinbad. So yeah. So what are some topics that you're talking about in the book? Um, really, it's a, also it's an anthology of most of my poems. So there's going to be some poems that are going to be very familiar to people that are big fans of my work. And there's going to be some new stuff in there, too. So um, current events, love, you know, the city. I do a lot of poems about Kansas City in the book as well, which uh, I didn't realize until I actually started like writing down the set together. list. So I was like, yeah, there's a lot of poems about the city. Well, that's good. You're from here, so. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I think it's going to be a real treat for people to uh, enjoy because it it's a well-rounded representation of me as a person and as a poet.
So how would somebody, um, if they wanted to get a copy of the book or get in contact with you or any of that, how would they do that? Well, I'm glad you asked because <laughs> I am having a book release party at Prospero's Books. It'll be November 21st. That's the official launch of the book. So at 8 o'clock, Saturday, November 21st, you can come. It's a $10 admission. $10 gets you a copy of the book. So you will get a copy of the book, and I will be reading that night selections from the book. So it is a very big treat. And also, you will be able to purchase at Prospero's Books at 1800 West 39th Street, KCMO. And also, you will be able to get copies from me. I do have um, a website coming. But until then, you can just contact me on Facebook, www.facebook.com backslash Ms with a Z, Angela, Rue, R-O-U-X, all together. So, okay. yeah. All right. Thank you for coming in, Angela. Thank you for having me. All right. I'm Serenity reminding you to speak your peace and make sure you check out whatsupkansascity.net. I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.